The vlog is a baby Taylor vlog. It is showing you all of the whips and all of the projects, everything that I've knit and crochet for baby Taylor. Baby Taylor is here. Finished objects. Just a cute little baby blanket that they can have when they're in their car seat or in a pram or whatever. Welcome to HD Designs Crochet, HDDC. I'm Heather, the designer of Granny Square Patterns for my tribe. I went from corporate lawyer being told what to do to full-time self-employed crochet designer doing what pleases my soul. Now, I also champion Yarny Creatives just like you to build income streams from your passion. Join me on my mission to change the world one crochet pattern at a time. Hey tribe, welcome back to HD Designs Crochet. I'm Heather and this is my channel all about the Granny Square, the new and aspiring crochet designer. And today I've got a little vlog for you. Um, I actually recorded this back in February and I edited it all and then when it came to export it, it was corrupt and it just would not work. So um, I try and upload, I've been trying to upload once a week and I'd got into like a little bit of a rhythm with it but this file just was not having any of it and so I decided that I would change my schedule ever so slightly and record the vlog again today. So today is Monday the 11th of April, I think. And I originally recorded this back in February, February the 11th. So two months later, I'm re-recording it. The vlog is a baby Taylor vlog. It is showing you all of the whips and all of the projects, everything that I've knit and crochet for baby Taylor. Baby Taylor is here. <laughs> Taylor is their surname. As the gender is a surprise, you will hear me say baby, baby Taylor, um, it, them, because we don't know which pronouns they've got. And I am currently 32 weeks and two days pregnant. So for <laughs> anyone that, before I was pregnant, I always used to be like, why do they do it in weeks? So for anyone that isn't sure, I am finally eight months pregnant and we are on the countdown now for baby to arrive. Um, as I said, back in February, I recorded a vlog. I showed you all of the projects I'd finished and the whips that I was working on. I think there was like three finished objects and maybe three or four whips. And now there is a lot more finished objects. So if you are new, hi, hello, and welcome to HGDC. And if you're returning, welcome back tribe, what's good, what's happening? Um, I think this vlog's gonna be about 40 minutes or so. I've got so much good stuff to show you. So I hope you've got a project with you. Um, maybe even a HDDC project. I was part of the HDDC Cal. I'll put all of the details on the screen for you, but I'm hosting a Cal from March to May. So we've not got long left, but you've still got enough time to make some of the projects. All you need to do to get involved is to make a HGDC pattern. So I've linked below the HGDC, H, 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 <laughs> I've linked below the HGDC shop. You can shop on my website, Etsy or Ravelry, and you can get the patterns. And then all you need to do is just simply tag me on Instagram. It's a really low key, um, cow because I wanted to keep the admin really really minimal um I didn't want to add any extra pressure on myself at the moment whilst we deal with this pregnancy so I've got finished objects finished objects and then I've got a basket of whips A little bit of information um, for you, just so that the details I'm about to tell you make sense. If you are returning, then you might have heard some of this. If not, then it's good to be in the know. Um, 
baby Taylor is due officially June the 4th. Um, but they may come early, they may come late, I may be induced early. It is all a little bit unknown at the moment. As we said, the baby's gender is a surprise, so everything that you see is very, very neutral. We've picked a woodland theme, so think earthy tones, neutrals, and um, non-gender specific. And there is, the main thing that we've gone with is bears, so like Winnie the Pooh, woodland bears. We're not having a nursery, baby's just going to have a cot next to us in our main bedroom and so we are keeping things very very minimal, there's not a lot on the list of things that we want to purchase, there's not a lot of things on our list full stop that we want to get and we've also been so wonderfully blessed and we've had so many donations and gifts as well so I'm going to do an entire vlog that shows you everything that baby's had from their registry and um also i am going to ikea at the weekend to get baby's cot i'm gonna get that set up so i want to take you along to do that um and then there will also be hopefully a gender reveal and a name reveal well, at some point so all being well my health continues to be steady manageable and there'll be lots of good vlogs coming out to you um, let's jump in to the finished objects. First thing I'm going to show you is this blanket. I didn't actually make this. Um, baby Taylor's nanny made it, so my mother. She wanted to make baby something. I sent her some images on Pinterest of like the colours we were going for, the vibe, and she made this. So cute! Um, so there are hearts in the centre of the granny squares and then she's done this border and she's gone with like the beige, like very much everything at the moment I'm loving is like this colour. Don't even ask me why, but just all of the warm, warm neutrals is just where I'm at. So it fits in perfectly and then the green is gorgeous. So once the cut is set up, we're going to have this on the end of the cut. It's going to look so pretty. Um... It is, how many squares? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's five by six. And it's just a cute little baby blanket that they can have when they're in their car seat or in a pram or whatever. So, really, really happy with that. It looks wonderful. So that is the first finished object. Slightly cheating because I didn't actually make it. <laughs> and we have been gifted a lot of other items that have been made. Um, but I'm going to do an entire vlog, as I said, on like all of the items that Baby's received. It's just that we got this last night and it was sat on Baby's box. So I had to show you. It's so, so cute. So thank you for that to my mother. So cute and very neat. She's not like a huge crocheter. And this is very, very neatly done. She should be very proud of herself. Now, onto the finished objects that I've made. And I've got a tub. I've got a whole box here. <laughs> this is a white company box. I received a Christmas present in it and it's got like a magnetic closure and I just thought the box was cute so I kept it and it's got baby stuff in it until we get the drawers sorted out. Going to Ikea this weekend one of the things on the list is to get some drawer organisers so they're like dividers so that you can put multiple stuff in so I want like the little cubby cosy things so I can put like socks and the rompers for different age groups all in there so until all that's done I've just kept all of the stuff in this tub. Um, shall we go in the order that I made them? I think that would be simplest. So when I found out I was pregnant, it was October and the nausea kicked in on week four of pregnancy and by week five, the sickness kicked in. And at first we thought it's just morning sickness, it's going to pass. And then it steadily became a whole lot more than that. Long story short, I got diagnosed with hyperemesis, which is Latin for extreme nausea and sickness of the pregnancy. And um, 
at its worst, I was being sick like 20 times a day. Um, and it could be at any point in the day. It didn't matter if it was gone midnight, like your body doesn't say enough's enough. Like in a 24 hour period, I'd be sick up to 20 times. I couldn't even keep water down. It's been a whole journey. It's been, it's been a whole journey. We'll just leave it at that. Um, I still have to sit down and do an entire vlog on high premises because there's a lot that I can share from my experience and there's a lot um, of awareness that I can raise um, but that's something I need to sit and plan and uh, I think I'll probably record some of it now and then maybe record some of it later on once I feel like I need to deal with certain things and get a certain point maybe like what am I trying to say I need to deal with some of what's happened and then I need to have processed it myself and be in an okay place with it myself before I then put it out there. So I might end up recording some now and doing some at a later date, but it is on my list to do. So I won't go into all the details now. I will link below some charities that have helped me in case anybody needs help. And also I've got quite a lot more information on my highlights on my Instagram about how my pregnancy has been. Um, but because it was, the sickness was so, so bad and so debilitating that it was just cruel because I got a lot of motion sickness so I couldn't crochet and knit because it would make me throw up. Like, all I could do was literally just try and lie still in a certain position and try not to move, um, try and avoid all triggers. It's just, it's just been hellish. Like, unless you see somebody going through it or you've been through it, I don't think you'll ever understand like the true impact of it it's been it's had the potential to be completely devastating um but thankfully i've got support around me and we're getting through and the sickness didn't really get controlled until i got to 26 weeks and i'm now 32 weeks so it's been a long, long journey as well. Um, if you imagine having like norovirus or the worst food poisoning of your life, but for like 200 and something days straight, then you start to get a little bit of an inkling of like what's been going on. So because the motion sickness was so strong, I couldn't crochet and I couldn't knit. And it's like what I love to do. So it robbed me of so much. Um, but as I started to be introduced to new medications, bit by bit, I could do little, a little bit here and there. And so I remember in December, I got put on a really low dosage of an anti-sickness tablet. And I was like, I want to knit. I want to make something for baby. So I did. So I'm going to show you the first thing I ever made. And that's these socks. And this is the perfect newborn sock pattern. And I will link all patterns below for you and I'll link all the yarn below as well. It's a very simple pattern and it just makes these cute, cute little socks. And you make, um, you make them from the cuff down and you make the cuff quite long so they can be folded over and they're just adorable, absolutely adorable. This is the Drops yarn, it's Drops sock yarn, it's a commercial yarn um, and I picked it because it's neutral and so right on the um, brief, right on brief of exactly what we wanted. However, now that I've used non-commercial yarns, I find this quite scratchy and I don't think I would want this on baby's bare skin so it'd be something that would go over like if they had like a onesie that had feet on, this is something I'd put over. But I don't think I'd necessarily put this on their bare skin. Um, the pattern, so, so simple. If you want to make socks, knit socks, and you've never knit them before, I would recommend this because it's so quick. Um, it takes next to no time at all. And if you go wrong, it's not too difficult to fix and they're just dinky. So it's rather than making like an entire adult sock and not quite getting the heel right, you've just got this tiny little sock instead. Um, the first time I made these, as I said, I was still really, really unwell. Um, and it's crazy to look back now and think how unwell I was. It took me days 
days and days to make these um purely because i could only do like 10 minutes here and there between vomiting and needing to sleep and it's just crazy but the second pair that i made took me um a couple of hours per sock i think within about six hours i had another pair done and the end sorted out as well and that's this pair so it's the same pattern but it's a different yarn and this is the mr b yarn it's their sock yarn mr b bird street yarn and i got this from nottingham yarn festival in 2018 and it's this gorgeous colorway i think it's like maple and maple maple and sugar something like that um i will link their yarn below anyway it's one of the ones that was inspired by jack daniels and if you look at the colors they're just so gorgeous i love all the browns but it's also got these amber and purple pops in there it's gorgeous and it's so so soft in comparison to the drops yarn as well i'll have no problem putting this on baby's bare skin um so they've got two pairs of socks it's the first things that i made absolutely adore them they're just so cute and i am now obsessed with making baby footwear i would just add in here that i've had plenty of people let me know that babies don't necessarily keep footwear on some babies don't like to wear it i might be wasting my time in making them thank you for giving me the heads up however i i think they're so so cute um if baby doesn't wear them then i can donate some of the other ones and also i have made these projects in a time where i really needed the comfort of something to work on and these are so small and portable and they don't take up too much brain power so even if they never get worn they serve the purpose at the time and that's what's important so i don't need you to comment below and let me know that i'm wasting my time because is time very well spent, thank you. So that's the first lot of Baby Taylor's footwear. And from there, I went a little crazy. Now the next thing I've made, I think this is like my favorite. You ready? I made fluffy booties. I absolutely love them. So babies due May, June and their first winter will be 2022. So I made the decision that I would use lighter weight yarns to make newborn stuff and I would use the heavier yarn to make some items for a larger, more grown, bigger child. Um, also part of my choice in doing that was because a lot of the wool that I want to use up is Aran weight um and so it made sense to make the more win the heavier items their first winter wardrobe um and babies just come out so many different sizes that i thought if i make like a huge newborn wardrobe but then i have like a nine pound whopper of a baby they might not fit in the newborn stuff for long or if i make um <sighs> I could make like some slightly bigger stuff and they'd be premature and they won't get into it for ages and then by then it'd be winter it's just you just don't quite know do you babies come when they're ready and they come out the size that they're gonna come out so um i just decided that i would make the heavier weight stuff bigger so that they could wear it over their first winter it also has then taken the pressure off because i don't necessarily need it all to be done ready for when baby arrives because a lot of it will be worn later on in the year um, and yes, I have been told numerous times by lots of people that I will never have time to knit or crochet again and I should get everything done now. Please, please don't spread those sort of messages to new mums, especially ones that have had a tough pregnancy. When the time is right, I will find time to knit and crochet. Thank you. So I made these cute, cute booties. Look. <laughs> um this yarn is teddy yarn i will link it below i think it was serdar 
and the pattern is the booty pattern and again I'll link that below um and I just decided to use this teddy yarn because it's so cute so so soft um another disclaimer because I think you might be able to tell I've had quite a few different comments um you need to do your own research on what yarn you think it is suitable to have around children. You don't want a yarn that's got loose fibres that they might inhale if they suck on their clothing or that they might breathe in. Um, so you need to do your own research and work out what you're comfortable with. I decided I wanted to make these, it will be for a slightly older child and it's most likely going to be something that we put on like when the child is in their when the child, when my baby is in their car seat or something like that. So should be okay. Um, there's this cute, cute, fluffy, fluffy yarn right on the colour scheme. Super simple to make. I think I used like the needle size that it called for. Um, I did a stretchy cast on. However, it's not got a lot of give. So that should help keep them on. Um, because this yarn, I don't feel like this yarn has a huge amount of stretch. But there we go. Um, I bought this yarn to make some samples because I wanted to do a collection with all these different fuzzy yarns. Um, and this was before I found out I was pregnant and I ordered quite a lot of neutral colours. Um, that must have been when my tastes were changing slightly. So what I did is I used the leftovers of that and part of the swatch that I'd made to make these but I didn't stop there because I also made matching mittens mm, so cute again it's a free pattern um by a different designer but because I used the same yarn it's basically made a matching set um again these will be something that you put on when we're going out and it's cold uh, one of the main things for me is that I love to take Albie, who is our, our dog, um, on a walk and we go across the fields and I've already got a baby carrier and a baby sling so that baby can come on walks with us and these will just mean that they're protected from the cold because it can get really quite chilly here in the United Kingdom. So, matching mittens and booties, free pattern, super simple to make couple of hours they were done and they're just so soft and lovely and I also made the booties in a couple of double knit yarns as well so as you can see we've got a cream and then we've got the beige that I'm loving at the moment and it's just double knit yarn um I think this one's from the pound shop and this one might have been from Sainsbury's. They are just budget acrylic yarns. Simple to throw in the wash, really simple to make. Um, these are so easy, so simple that it's great for like car knitting or I knit in church. They're just so simple to put in a little project bag. Um, and once you've made a couple, like once you've made one or two, you kind of just know what you're doing as well. Um, and so I've also made matching mittens. So here's one of the ones for this one. And I've also, here's the second one. I was using it as a reference. It's the same patterns, but just different yarns. So you can see how different they are. It's the beauty of yarn. Um, and I've just been putting the mittens inside the socks, the booties, so they don't get lost. And, um, looking forward to putting them on i am part way through making the mittens for these you'll see that in the whip section one thing i would suggest if you are making booties and mittens for a baby is so you know what size you've made this is the system that i discovered a little bit too late when you make a smaller size give them one by one ribbing and that means you use a smaller needle then use the bigger needle or if you're making the bigger size because some patterns say 
increased needle size, some increased stitches. So whichever one, use two by two rib. And then for the third size, because there's usually three sizes, use three by three rib. So that means at a glance, you know what size they are. Obviously you can just compare them and figure it out that way because, you know, like sizing, blah, blah, blah. But I wish I'd thought of that sooner and I would have made all of these smaller pairs with one by one rib and then a batch of bigger ones with two by two rib. So that would be my top tip if you want to make anything for a baby, because it's just, it would just make it so much easier to figure out what sizes they are. So really recommend these patterns, super quick, super simple to work up. Um, if you needed a gift, then these or the mittens, you could do the mittens in like a couple of hours and then it's something that you could gift. Um, <laughs> so as I said, there's a footwear collection for this baby. <laughs> and I would like to make some more. Um, we'll see how many pairs we get done with the time I've got left. I also wanted to make a pair of baby snugs. So snugs is one of my HDDC patterns. It's a granny square slipper that's got a fluffy lining. And so I started making the granny square boots. <laughs> they are so cute. I've made these. I need to do some tweaking and then make the fluffy center um, and finish them. So this is a prototype. The sizing will be slightly different. Look. So even more boots. Granny square slippers. So cute. Um, I did post about the snugs on Instagram. And when the time is right, I will launch it as a pattern. So I will be looking for testers. I'm not going to make promises when that will be because I intended to finish them last week. And then I went for a routine appointment um, Monday morning and in, in hospital and then being admitted and not coming home until Tuesday. And then that just kind of threw off most of the week till about Thursday, Friday till I sorted out my sleep and Basically, I didn't get it done, and so I'm just not making any promises. When when it's done, I will post about it. If you want to sign up to be a tester, the best thing you can do, I will link it below. Um, I'll put the actual link below, but on my website, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom in the yellow panel, there's loads of information, and one of them is testers. If you click on that, it sends you to a form, and you can sign up to be a tester, and then whenever I have anything that needs to be tested, I will email that list, and then you can get in touch and say whether you want to test or not. And my email, my testers always get dibs via email, and then I'll post it on social media. So I'll link the form below and then you can sign up so that you get notified first. Now, after the socks and a pair of the booties, I actually made this. <laughs> this is the Flax Light by Tin Can Knits. Again, it's a free pattern. It calls for four ply yarn or fingering weight yarn and it is a top down um baby sweater that is made in the round and it's the first time i've made a top down in the round with knitting um and it was lots and lots of fun i've really enjoyed making all of the baby tailor stuff and um an added bonus has been that because everything is so small and dinky it's quick to build up and on top of that it means that i can tackle new techniques and learn new things that I haven't done as a knitter before because I am a crocheter first. A lot of what I've made has been in crochet. So then when it comes to knitting, I haven't made a lot. And, when the, the, and then when you add in adult sizing, it takes a lot longer. Whereas a jumper like this takes a couple of hours. I got too hot, so I had to take my fluffy off. <laughs> this bump radiates heat like this child takes after their dad because Brad is always warm he wears shorts like all year round whereas I'm usually always cold and I need all of the layers but this bump just like heats me up and I feel like it's bizarre 
it is bizarre that's all i can say um but i have like reynard syndrome which means my circulation is not great in my feet and hands and then um, i can very easily lose the circulation in them so you'll quite often see me in like shorts and a belly top but then thick socks and gloves so that my hands and feet don't get cold but i cannot stand the rest of me being warm it's bizarre pregnancy is just bizarre full stop so as i was saying i made this little baby flax it's so cute oh my gosh i have learned loads and loads of techniques by creating baby taylor's wardrobe this is the first time i knit in the round top down for a jumper um, and it's a raglan so it's the first time I've done raglan increases in the round as well um, I learned the stretchy cast on I think it's like a German cast on I'll link it below I also learned a stretchy bind off however I don't think I needed the, bind, the stretchy bind off on this and it's actually caused this to flare out so what I'm going to do is before I weave the ends in, I'm going to just rip out that bind off and I'm going to just do a normal one. Um, and then on both the sleeves and the hem, just so it doesn't flare out. And then oh, I might have already done it on the hem, actually. So just the sleeves and then um, weaving the ends. When I made this one, the holes in the armpit were quite big and I was a little bit concerned I'd done it wrong. Um, but I spent a little bit of time on YouTube, found quite a few tutorials that showed you showed you how to sort out the problems with the armpits. Um, so on this one, I kind of had to use the, the ends of the yarn to sort it out. But I made a second one and it was much, much better. So I'm glad that I've learned how to sort out those holes. This yarn, before I move on, is the Mr. B yarn that I used to make the socks. Um, and I will weigh how much I will weigh this and put it below because I had a hundred gram skein and I've made this, the socks, and I still got 35 grams left over. So you do not need a lot of yarn to make baby items and you can see the colors. <laughs> it's gorgeous. I'm thinking this with some like off-white or cream leggings and then like a pair of booties or I could even have the matching socks he's so cute so that's the flax light and then I made it in worsted or Aran weight yarn so this is the flax and I actually went with the same sizing, but obviously they're different weights of yarn, so they come out different sizes. Um, stretchy, but I did the normal bind off. It's just a whole lot neater as well. And then the armpit holes are much better, much, much neater. And again, I need to weave in the ends and then wash and block all of these items and I was just gonna do it all in one go when I've got quite a few of them. Um, this yarn is the Hobbycraft, um, it's their own brand, like the Women's Institute, Aaron, um, the ball of it is here. It's like an off white a cream with all of these flecks in and you've got um like a khaki a mocha brown a much more like tan brown and then one that you could even pass off as black in there we went to our local hobby craft um i'd had a really rough week and i was just been having really bad cabin fever because I've been feeling quite isolated it's been a struggle to go out of the house and um, because if if the vomiting's bad then I constantly need something to throw up in it's embarrassing to throw up in public um at its worst I was getting nosebleeds when I was throwing up and getting dizzy passing out and so it then meant that I had to have someone with me and I couldn't drive and I just felt so trapped and so 
one weekend Brad took me to Hobbycraft so I could have like an hour or so of normality and he picked this yarn and you know what it's lovely it's really really soft um it's a hundred percent acrylic but it it just feels really smooth really soft and it knits up really really nicely and it was a 400 gram ball for about 10 pound and um this is i weighed it the other day and i've forgotten already i will put it below for you but i think it's like 135 grams of yarn or something um so i could easily get like three out of the ball of yarn and some accessories so that is this one's just so cute and i keep looking at it thinking it's massive but then i remember baby's not going to come out that big this is the naught to six months <laughs> so don't panic yourself okay now i've got one more finished object that i can share i've got a couple more that i've finished but um i'm keeping them to one side because i showed them to brad and he said that um people will try and guess the gender based off of the colors that i've picked so what i'm going to do is leave them and i will show you those at a later date and it will help keep this vlog a little bit shorter so this is the next thing to show you oh no it's so cute it's stinking cute absolutely adorable <laughs> can't cope this is the first paid for pattern that i'm showing you actually um i there's a little bit of a story with this one so last year when i made a um vision board for this year so i made it in like no that's not right the year before i was pregnant i made a vision board and it had on it that i wanted to have a baby uh brad and i had spoken about it we were trying for a little bit and then we decided to stop um because i got covid and it lasted a long time and i used up some of my savings whilst dealing with that so we stopped trying however we got pregnant it's the way these things seem to work sometimes um but anyway on that vision board was a picture of this pattern and i had it on there and i just knew that to me that's everything that i would visualize when it came to having a child was making this cute outfit the baby wearing it um and i was just so so excited and so when i found out i was pregnant i knew that i had to make these this pattern is the maple overalls and i will link it below the designer is like i just adore their patterns um So it's the first paid for pattern that I've made actually for baby and um, the yarn that I used is double knit yarn and again it's from Hobbycraft it's their own yarn it's the Women's Institute and the colorway was honey and I'll try and link it below for you and it's really soft and it worked up really really nicely and I, I overbought like I think I only needed 200 grams I think the pattern said to get 200 grams and i bought 300 grams just in case so i've got quite a bit left over um so i'm actually going to make some booties and hats and things with it as well because it's just it's a really nice yarn the only thing i need to do is i've left a hole here um i need to just secure the button band to the leg which i will do at some point probably when i sort out all the ends on these um, this is the first time, no, the second time of knitting a button band and the pattern was really, really useful, really detailed and it told you like um, how to space out the buttons, how to like work out how many stitches to pick up. It was well worth it. Um, this pattern was, I don't know, like £6 or something. It was like next to nothing um 
but it goes into so much detail it's so so worth it you start by casting on the neck and then you work top down but in rows instead um, and that's like my only downside to the pattern is because it was in rows there was quite a bit of purling um but it's so small that it works up so so quick anyway and i have gotten a lot quicker at purling after doing some of these designs um i picked buttons from stash and they're just like this slightly pearlescent brown color the only mistake that i've made is i put a buttonhole right at the very top and then decided i didn't want to put a button on so there's a little bit of a hole there i might get a little bit of spare yarn and try and just fudge it other than that i'm really really happy with it and that was my mistake not the patterns um <laughs> this is so cute i think i made the smaller size and this is huge how is this baby in me <laughs> oh my gosh oh dear so that's the maple overall. I 110% recommend that pattern. So, so cute, completely adorable. The pattern is so detailed, so, so detailed, so worth the money. Um, and actually it gave me some food for thought on how I set out my patterns as well. I love it when you find a designer that's just so good that it makes you like um, critique your own work. So yeah, definitely get this pattern. Would I make it again? I would make it again, but I don't want to do all of the purling. So I'd rather make it in the round. I have actually got some ideas in my own mind of a like onesie or romper pattern that I want to make myself. Um, so I don't know if I would make this again anytime soon, but I can see me making it at some point. Um, it's just so cute i'm really proud of this one so that is all of the finished projects so far we've got two flax jumpers one in our own one in four ply um we've got the baby onesie in double knit yarn and then we've got one two three four pairs of booties the snugs are almost done um a pair of mittens two pair of mittens and two pairs of socks so far plus a couple of other items in there that i'm going to show you once um once baby's here and then we've got this blanket from my mum as well so that's all of the finished stuff and now i've got whips Whew. that's all of the finished stuff and I actually have about five or six whips to share as well. So I think what I'm going to do is end this vlog here because I can see it's about 40 odd minutes and I'll do the whips separate just so that it's easier to edit, upload, blah, blah, blah. So I hope that you've enjoyed watching this. Please comment below with your favourite out of all of the finished projects um, and which pattern that you might be making or want to make. And also, if you've got any suggestions of patterns that I should make, then link them below for me as well. That'd be really useful. And I'll see you in the next one. For me, it'll be like, I'll see you in a minute. But for you, maybe I'll see you next week. So thank you for watching. Take care, tribe. Bye.